Where's this? See the power lines, the tree line. Allegedly, it's Bar Harbor. I can't make out. Bummer like, of a day. Down there is maybe a parking lot with a dock, but yep. I can't quite. Otherwise, it happens. Sorry, guys. It happens out there. I uh, I go up like through the mid coast and down East Main a couple yeah. times a year, and uh, you know this is fairly common. This is what <laughs> it's, it's, right. It's part of coastal living. It's kind of where we're living at, uh, and we've got some showers on the way. Some of us are actually broken out to a little sun. I noticed Portland. Just looking out the window had some, but there's not a ton of that. And the showers are moving quickly, a little bit more uh, rapidly than they were modeled to yesterday. So they'll be in a little bit earlier with showers and storms here over the next few hours. This model tries to dissipate the front. I'm not sure why. I think there'll be a pretty good amount of rain still going on here. Five o'clock, six, seven, eight o'clock into the mid coast and eventually into down east Maine, breaking the fog there through early tomorrow morning. The advantage of this front moving faster right now is that it will get out of our hair faster tomorrow. So I actually think tomorrow's forecast has improved. We still have some showers over Washington and Hancock County in the morning, but I think we're clearing pretty quickly over western Maine, uh, New Hampshire, and even um, mid coast Maine. And we're able to clear out through the afternoon really nice tomorrow afternoon. We need it. It's been a little bit right since we've had a kind of a consistently sunny day into the mid 70s. It'll be a little bit breezy, but I don't think it'll be a big problem. And then Friday looks good too. some high thin clouds will work in on Friday morning along the coastline. Guess what those are from Lee, which we'll now spend the rest of the broadcast talking about. Here's Hurricane Lee winds 115 miles an hour, still category three. If you're paying attention at home, spatially Lee already getting stretched, right? Elongated. And that's part of the process that will continue as it moves north northward in latitude. That's jet stream gets involved, starts pulling these things into a wider but weaker wind field, which is uh, something we're going to discuss here in a minute. So category three still, it will sail comfortably to the west of Bermuda as a category two. By the time we wake up Saturday morning, we're waiting for Lee. It'll still probably be a cat one hurricane, but I continue to think that it will not make it to Maine as a category one hurricane. So here we are Saturday morning, 9 a.m. almost due east of Cape Cod, but somewhere in here, I think it falls apart to a tropical storm, if not post tropical cyclone would be the technical wording for it. It doesn't really matter that much, but just to point out where the winds will be at at that point. You know, what? I don't even need to show you that anymore because the models have come into agreement. The Euro winds again. Stop me if you've heard this before. So let's talk about the wind speeds that are going to come through here on Saturday. You can see them gust up there into the 50s through Saturday afternoon into Saturday night. I think Todd made this headline. I agree with it. I think if anything, I want to guard for the downward side. I think saying 40 to 60 is fair. I still think we're looking at 50 to 55 along the coast for most of us gusts. Now sustained, probably about 30 miles an hour. So it's going to be windy all day. Um, unlike some of our other events where it just hits for one short period of time. We have a lot of negative factors for power outages, leaves, saturated ground, especially after today's front. So I do think we'll see quite a few power outages. The winds when they're strongest, by the way, will be out of the north and northwest, which is kind of unusual for us. You usually think of those as kind of downsloping winds. Now, the exact track will only make little wobbles in that wind forecast. What it will make a huge difference in is this, the rainfall forecast. So if the track wobbles, 50 miles, this whole axis of heavy rain shifts this way and that way. And so that's the part we need to watch right now. The mid coast and down east Maine will see the most rain and there will be no surprise, Brian, some big waves out there. And I just want to put a word of caution out there and you're going to you're going to say, well, you're going to go stand out there probably on Saturday. And that that is true. But um, this is also what I do because of the wind directions, because of the swells, there's a potential that we'll have some almost rogue wave type action along the coast. So you might see swells that are 10, 15 feet, and then you'll get a 22 footer behind it. And the reason I'm saying this is there's a lot of weenies out there like me who like to watch storms. I've been there and I've seen them. Be very careful this uh, Saturday with that because the waves will not be congruent. And if you're out on rocks, that could be very dangerous. So um, that's where we're at. Still prepared for some power edges or quite a few power edges on Saturday. Um, and if you're sub pump, you might want to Give the float switch a little Things check. To check ahead of time. But that's it. I don't think we need to go crazy here. Okay, that's encouraging. And a good reminder, it's so tempted to go stand on the rocks and yeah. watch. Very dangerous. Do it from the high ground. All right, yeah. we'll do. Keith, thanks.